I just got back from taking my dog for a walk and since I live in California on the coast of California and since we got a little bit of rain here um, we actually have flowers this year last year was a terrible drought this year we've actually got flowers so uh, there were poppies everywhere California poppies which if you haven't seen California poppies there are orange and yellow and uh, just the most cheery flowers that you can imagine so since I love orange and yellow they just struck me today and I decided I was going to just do a quick sketch nothing elaborate at all but just gonna paint some poppies today and I'm just sketching them I don't need to sketch them you know really if you if you want to sketch you can if you don't want to that's fine normally I don't um, but today I'm just doing what I feel like doing and apparently it is sketching now I do know that I'm going to use this is Schminky Orange and this is Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Gold and up here I have this is my palette my uh, paint box with my white knights in it and this is the color I want to use this is Golden Deep and I'm going to use Cadmium Lemon I don't know if I'm going to use the Nickel Azo Gold we shall see um, and why USA that is she using two oranges and the reason behind that is that the two oranges are very different they behave completely different and so I'm going to take advantage of both of them I'm going to start up at this top one because it's if I start here and I start then I paint here next I always will put my finger in it so I'm going to be smart this time and do the top one first now I'm starting with the White Knights Golden Deep and the reason I'm starting with that along the edge here is because it's the the White Knights colors are quite heavy and it's going to want to stay there where now I've got a little dab of this schminky translucent orange and this one wants to, this one's okay this one likes to move just fine it's it's not a real stubborn one like like the white knights there so so we're good. I'm going to leave some white a lot of times I forget to leave white don't you hate it when you do that and then all of a sudden you go ah oh, man there should have been some white there now this is lemon cadmium lemon and a really nice light yellow I, I use this one pro it's probably my favorite of the yellows that I have from white nights now I'm going to just go in here and I'm going to join forces okay you guys start mixing and I'm just going to let them do it. They they are in charge of what goes on from here. I think that I shouldn't have put quite so much orange right there. And also I think I'm going to put just a little dab of ruby. Now ruby is my only white knight's color that I would do this with because it's a real clear red and all the others would turn this murky but I'm gonna to touch just to touch down here just to give it some depth okay and we'll see I don't know if I'm going to be liking this much white and we shall see if I do if I don't I'll come back and deal with it 
and I'm just going to help it blend a little bit here. Okay. Now I'm going to go over and do this one. The same thing. Now I've got the, the lights coming from over here. So I'm going to put my deep, golden deep, in on the deep part of this flower because I know this golden deep is going to stay there and it's not going to all of it isn't going to migrate away like I could actually have that problem with the schminkies because they are quite movable I got a little bit too much red there I'm going to pull that out see I'm just drying my brush and pulling that out okay now I'm going to get some of the Schminky Translucent Orange. Beautiful color. It's just a little bit too... This one, all of the White Knights colors, almost all the White colors. Let me see, are there any that don't do this? I guess I'm going to say all of the White Knight colors, White Knights colors that I have maintain their color you know typically you put watercolor on and then it dries a lot lighter uh, white nights uh, don't do that n nearly as much as most other most other paints watercolor paints do so i really like them because of that Okay, I am going to grab a smaller brush here. And I'm just going to, while the flowers are still wet, I'm going to wet the area where the stem is going to be. This is supposed to be clear water, but I've picked up a little orange. And I'm going to let that run down in there. I know, I know, it's not going to be an orange stem, I know. It wants to be an orange stem. This one's got a little bit too much of it in there. So I'm going to dry this brush and I'm going to pull a little bit of that out. I want the orange down there but I don't want quite that much. See how cool that is when you can just pick it up. So don't let anybody tell you that you cannot pick up watercolor paint because you can. Some of it is more pick upable than others though. So than other colors and some of them are staining and then there are brands that are you know so you have an orange and a schminky and an orange and a um, white knights for instance they are probably not going to be exactly the same as far as how much you can pick up. So you just have to get to know your colors. Now what I'm putting in here now is an indigo. Why isn't she painting it green? Because that is so boring. I want to make my stems something interesting to look at. Okay, this is indigo. I always also want to get that up into there. Now I'm going to give this a little bit of lemon because blue and yellow make green. This is too dry. Shoot. How did I get that so dry? Oh, when I picked it up. I picked up I picked up almost all the water. So now I've got to dab some in there again. Put some back. Watercolor painting is an exercise in solving problems. As you do something and go, oh, well, now how am I going to deal with that? And then, oh, now I did something else. Now 
Okay. Oh well. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this orange here. A little bit too much. And I'm going to replace it with some of my indigo. With more indigo than that. There we go. Now that's going to go up and blend up there. Which is what I want it to do. What am I going to do next? I guess I'll do the same on flower number three. Well, I still have a picture of all those California poppies in my head. I want to get this down on paper. And this is just a little watercolor sketch. It's I don't really consider this like a painting to sell, but you never know. A lot of times the things that people want are things that just came because of an inspiration of a, a walk with my dog. So this might be something that sells quickly. If I put it up for sale, we shall see, we shall see. Leaving white. I want to leave some white. I'm going for my lemon up here again. Okay. And let's try that again on the stem and see if I can do a little bit better job this time. I'm not going to make a connection with that orange yet. Just leave that unconnected. And then I'm going to get some of my indigo and drop it on the right side of my stem because that's my shadow side. And I want some that's thicker than that. It's too thin. There we go. And now let's get a little bit of our lemon. There, that's better. Okay, now I'm going to make the connection, but I'm going to have a good amount of my indigo there. And now I'm going to let those just go together. Be free. Okay. And I need a little bit of shadow right up there. And I think I'll have a little shadow right up there. And I'll go up here. Okay. They are coming right along. What I like to do, when I start getting my edges a little bit too, what I call it, is too precious, I can see every single one of these edges, and I don't like that. I want to lose some of those and just sort of like, oh, what would you call that? Be sort of like a... A little mistier, uh, not misty. 
the lost edges. So what I do is when my edges get a little bit too precious, I wet out beyond them, which is where I want the paint to, to travel. Now this is still plenty wet. So I'm just going to go in here and let this go. I, I just don't want it to be so trapped. I want my picture to be more airy and suggestive. But not everywhere. This isn't effective if you do it everywhere. So I'm just going to let it come out. Free up your picture. See how much nicer that made that look? Well, I suppose some of you don't think it's nicer. And that's okay too, because that's that's the way you want to see the, the picture. And I hope that you try this and and keep those edges tight if if that's the way you you know, if that's what you'd like to look at. That's perfectly perfectly good. You can do that. It's your it's your picture. Me I just like it I just like a little looseness. I just want it to be loose. Now this is a technique that I'm going to be demonstrating in my next class. That's going to be posted on learn.sandrajschultz.com. This one where I'm painting flowers and then and then I just turn around and loosen them up. And it just makes such a nice airy picture. The first one, picture that I did like that is um, I did some delphiniums and uh, that was the fastest picture I've ever sold in my life. I, the first person that looked at it snapped it up and it was just delphiniums, no background, loosened up in this way. See, I just find that so much more attractive, and I'm just going to let it go. But I have to actually wait now for this to dry some, because this is a darker color inside here. And if I go and, and uh, try to get up against here with a dark color, I'm going to just lose all my variations in color. So I'm going to shut this off for a little bit and step away from this picture before I keep messing with it and mess it up. Okay, I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, I'm back and the um, the painting has dried somewhat, but not all the way. So what I'm going to do here is I, I don't want it to be completely hard edges and so I'm going to go in, I'm going to touch these um, slightly damp areas but I'm not going to, uh, let's see, what color do I want? I think I'm going to go with my, uh, I think I'm going to go with just a, no, let's see, no, no, no. I'm going to start with my yellow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it back down. Okay, so here we go. Just going to touch up here. Make sure that I get my lights in because it's, if you've gone too far with your darks, there's no turning back. You cannot go back and get your lights in. So uh, I'm just going to be smart here and just touch a little bit of light in each one of these areas. There we go. Now I'm going to go with some translucent orange, I think. because it does like to move and I want it to move here. 
Now in the center, I'm going to go with this ruby. Such a lipstick color. But it's my clearest red. You know, it's not ideal for this, but it's my clearest red, and it's my best chance of getting something that I like here. I've tried mixing all of my other reds with um, oranges, and they don't make me happy. They kind of turn murky. So let's see if I've made a mistake here. I think I need to go up a little higher with my yellow, even though I didn't draw it like that. Just going to do that. Okay, let's see. Pretty dry brush. I'm just going to swing it through here and see if I can get that to go. I think that's a good start. I'll come back with some more color. Okay, this one. Same, I'm going to put in some translucent orange. And then I'm going to put in, oh, I just picked the wrong thing, not, I think I might have taken the wrong color there. Okay, it's a little bright, it's a little bit too bright. So, because I have orange and yellow, and because violet is on the other side of the color wheel from, from yellow, I'm going to touch some violet in here. I, I can't help it. It just, it doesn't matter if it's not even within the realm of being there, I can't seem to put, to do a picture without violet. Because, I don't know, I'm just addicted to this color as an accent color. Now that absolutely is not anything that I saw today. Those colors do not have one iota. I mean, those flowers do not have one iota of violet in them. And I've whipped my artistic license out of my pocket and I'm holding it here so that I can be allowed to do what I want with these flowers. They're my flowers. I can do it if I want to. See, I like that. I like violet. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to loosen up these edges. I don't like them like that. I want them to. Oh, I've got some violet in my brush still. Well, that's okay. Happy little accident there. And loosen that up. It just allows that edge to just recede and and then it, your eye the viewer's eye needs to make up that where that it exists and that makes it perfect i don't want to be telling my viewers to giving my viewers too many facts just enough to get them thinking about what i'm trying to paint here but then they then they go into their own imagination and finish it just going to drop a little bit more water in here this is violet is a white night color so true to form it's pretty heavy 
and it will want to stay put. And so you might have to go in there and move it a bit if you've got White Knight's colors. I'm going to have this to go. I th that's too tight there. Come on out. Come out. There we go. That's I like that better. Okay. This is too tight too. And heck, I want a little bit more. And now I maybe possibly overdid that just a touch. So I'm going to take a paper towel, I'm going to wad it up, and I'm going to dab it once. And that is, that is the extent of my dabbing. I'll go once, maybe twice, but never more. Quote the raven. Okie dokie. I'm going to stop messing with this. I think it's done. This is just a little, um, it's a little study that I did just based on my little walk with my dog and the sunshine in California on the California coast. And, oh wait, wait, I'm not done. I got to pull this down here. This one too. I'll just pull some shadows in here. How could I forget that? There we go. That's a little nicer. Pull it together. And I've got some pretty precious, see this precious lines there, too much, too, too laid out for the viewer. I don't like that, not too much. Just let them come down and be part of the group. Okay, drop of water there, and I think that pretty much sums up what I, my little walk with my dog. So, um, next time you get out on a walk and you see something that inspires you, run back to your studio and paint it, even if it's not even a finished picture. This one I'm probably going to remember because it's like, I'll, I'll, re I'll remember those poppies, where they were, how vivid they were, the sun shining on them, the oranges, the yellows, and I made up the purples. Well, there you go. Have fun painting. Bye.